And we should be live. You should, I should be audible on the stream. People should be able to hear me out there in internet land. Hopefully I'm audible and hopefully I have captions. Um, without too much further ado, I'm going to switch us to the actual game session so I can see myself. And I'm going to not put that up on stream. Cool. Okay. Hi, hello, and welcome back. Cat heard and seen, heard and seen. Sweet, sweet. All right. Cool. So, welcome back. This is part two of our Lore Link Plays Feng Shui 2. Um, where in the last, basically, if you, when last we met, um, our exciting group of action heroes who all have their own various reasons for going to the poll, which they'll reintroduce themselves here shortly. But they had gotten a mysterious message telling them to come to the poll. They had been told uh, that each of their melodramatic, basically each of their, basically something important to each of them was waiting for them at the poll. Um, so they hopped on a conveniently organized transport plane that was heading to the North Pole and discovered that it was populated with Nazis. Kind of, well, they're kind of a weird kind of Nazi. They're like, not neo-Nazis and the fact that they're just skinheads and things like that. They were actual, uh, were uniform-wearing, Luger-carrying type Nazis, except that they all were speaking German with terrible English accents. Or rather, they were speaking English with terrible German accents. Um, a kind of a weird combination of both, really. Uh, so... They proceeded to do what one does when confronted with such a situation, which is to instigate violence. Um, gunshots, but fisticuffs, archery, baseball bats all ensued. Um, the basically the fake, the, the cosplaying, the fake Nazis all met the business ends of various weapons. Uh, one of them attempted to open the door and sucked them out of the plane, um, causing the plane. Basically, one of them got stuck in an engine, causing the plane to go into a dive. Uh, and then the, the, basically then sensing the situation was going to end up critical, they decided to get out of Dodge. Well, using a Dodge. Well, not really a Dodge. It, it's more of a, uh, uh, it's a different brand of car, which name has just, it's a Chevy. Yes, not a Dodge. Um, and so they used a Chevy to get out of the situation, drove the car out of the back of the plane, parachuted down to the ground, and now find themselves... Basically, on the road to Santa's workshop, literal road, they can see the factory in the distance. They're all gathered in the car and they're heading that direction. Some kind of music playing, uh, blaring. So go ahead and everyone can kind of introduce themselves and give me two things. One, give us a brief reminder of who you are and why you're here. And two, what radio station your character attempts to get the car set to. We'll start with uh, Martine. Um, so I'm Archie, the archer. Ha ha. Um, and as much as originally I had some beef with the big fat man that lives at the North Pole, I've kind of, yeah, attention span's not great. Re re I was reminded at some point that there's a big candy cane that marks the North Pole, or so I'm told. And so my now new goal is to go lick it. Um yeah, yeah. And the station I'm trying to probably get on there is some sort of like, I don't know, new age something, 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 except there's, n yeah, some kind of like metal new age something, 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 if that even exists. Hey there, it's Chris. I'm a bounty hunter. I'm a big fan of my shotgun. Named Lucille. Yeah, that's right. My gun has a name. Get over it. I'm here hunting the Grinch in order to save Christmas. Felt like a good thing to do. I mean, if you're going to get paid, you might as well get paid for doing something good, right? Anyway, I'm probably trying to set the radio station to, I don't know, maybe a news channel. Or maybe there, there's like a like a B detective, like like a read aloud, like kind of you know like audible, but on the radio. I don't know, like some kind of radio show or some sort. 
Um, Tony. Yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Clarence. I'm, I'm just mainly here because I, I've really been wanting a pound puppy for a few years now and I just keep getting coal and I just want to get that, that little Brown with the dark black spots pound puppy from Santa that I really feel he owes me. Um, and as we're traveling to do that, I'm just trying to get some nice, uh, soft rock on the, uh, radio. And last and most significantly, the driver, 20. Yeah, I am a Maverick Cop Sam Hunter, and I am here to ferret out the mole in Santa's operation who has been telling children uh, that they're not getting presents when they actually are on the nice list. And what is playing on the radio, because nobody gets to choose but me, is Trans-Siberian Orchestra Christmas. Hello? <laughs> We're on our way to the North Pole. Gotta have the theme. All right, it's fair choice. Okay, so um, as a reminder, in terms of your character statuses, let's, it's the start of a new session. So let's go ahead and basically you've got some time as you drive towards the North Pole at this point. Or rather, to Santa's workshop at the North Pole. Um, you can go ahead and any damage you have taken, you can go ahead and clear. Actually, nobody took that much damage, so it's not that important. But you, have, the more important thing is any fortune that you spent, we can reset back to full. Uh, meaning the fact that whatever the number is listed as, as fortune on your character sheet, that is the number of fortune dice that you have. Uh, the only exception to this is going to be Archie, who has key instead of fortune. It serves the same purpose, except they have additional abilities that will let them spend key. Um, as a note, basically just to remind everybody as we're, when we're doing stuff, fortune can be spent uh, to add a die, add a positive die. Uh, as a reminder, how rolling works is you're taking two dice, one is positive, one is negative. You are taking the positive die and subtracting it from the negative die. If you roll sixes on this, you continue rolling, whether it's positive or negative. If it's positive, do you add all those numbers up and you get a bigger number to start with? If it's negative die that's rolling sixes, it can get bad. Um, as a note, basically, you want to be you want to be paying close attention. If you roll two sixes on both dice. Uh, both the fortune, basically both the positive and the negative die. Uh, that means the fact that something interesting happens. You roll again, and you see whether or not it is, uh, basically whether your, your result is positive or negative. If it's positive, then the something interesting is in your favor. If it's negative, the something interesting is, well, not in your favor. Um, I don't think there's anything else. You all have the action guy, which can help you look at stuff. I will, but the only other thing I will kind of remind you of um, is that attacks and other stuff do not have to be single targeted. You can choose to do actions that will target one, two, three, four, lots of people. Um, if they are mooks, you're more likely to hit anyway. Um, and mooks die as soon as they take any sort of damage. So Whenever they interact with the environment. Hey, hello, not donkey. Thanks for the follow. And if you are, basically you can be descriptive with your actions, take into account the environment, uh, and have fun, explode stuff, be exploded. Um, and we will go <laughs> from there. So you're on the road to the factory. Um, you can see the lights off in the distance and you're getting closer at this point. Some time has passed. Um, you can kind of see that there are gates. Um, uh, basically, there are at least there's like, like you can see that there are guards in some kind of green uniform kind of marching back and forth on what looks to be some kind of improvised roadblock. Um Basically, the road isn't actually currently blocked, but they've got kind of stuff that they could push in front of the road. Um, 
so far, your arrival doesn't seem to be raising any concerns. Um, basically, you can tell that there are basically several of the several of the green green suited individuals are kind of leaning against the basically leaning against the operator booth, as it were, smoking cigarettes and laughing. From what you can hear, basically, so far you can't really hear any so far. You can just kind of see them in the distance. So, what's your approach? Well, I'm just. Well, I'm not the one like... driving, so. Yeah, exactly. Defer to the driver. Well, what do you all think? You think we just roll up and tell them why we're here? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Ask directions unless... to the candy cane. Uh, oh my lord! <laughs> and, and, unless I see any particular signs or evidence of where where the Grinch might have gone, otherwise I'm I'm just heading up. Now, if I see signs of the Grinch, I'll. Uh... I'll shout out because that's that's something worth following up on. What what are the signs of the Grinch? Sniff about. My understanding is that he stinks. Maybe since he's some some green fur flying around. I don't know. Hmm. All right. Okay. Well, uh, Hunter will drive the car up to the. Uh, Okay. To as the guard get, booth. As you get closer, it becomes obvious that these are um the individuals are snapple basically they are sharply dressed in basically very clean pressed uh green uniforms. Um <clears throat> but they all have basically you can tell basically as you get closer, they all have kind of red and black uh armbands, which mm. have Basically, suspicious shapes on them as you start to get closer. Uh, Hunter will break and slow down and say, uh, Well, you see the armbands? I see some more punching. Um, should I bring it as, as I start bringing out my bow and get ready to draw? So, unless somebody stops me. Are these, wait. Has somebody taken over the North Pole and now the Santa's elves have uh, turned to the dark side? Because that's kind of what I'm seeing right now. It sure looks like it. I don't trust this at all. Like, this seems dark even for the Grinch. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I have a bow. Hold on. Just don't provoke them yet. I mean, you're definitely getting looks at this point because you've, got, you've driven relatively close and so they're... Basically, they've kind of broken off with their laughing, and they're kind of peering in your direction. <clears throat> they haven't lowered the gates or anything like that, so. Uh, Clarence, any thoughts? I just want my pound puppy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it doesn't look like Santa's available, buddy. That's that's unfortunate. We may have to go find Santa and rescue him. Uh, so you said the gates are not lowered? No, they are not. So we can drive on in? Everybody make sure your seatbelt's on. Hunter will. Does an eighty-one Impala come with seatbelts? <laughs> Smart hats. Yes, but they're um, all lap belts. I mean, it's better than nothing. Okay. <laughs> Sheesh. Um. Don't malign Gertrude. Uh, Lucille um, and Gertrude. Uh, Hunter will. Step on the gas, gun the engine, and uh, uh, with the intent of just driving right past the guard shack. Okay. So give me a driving check. So that's the the. Yep, add your, um, okay, roll two dice. Add your driving skill as it were. Got it. Thank you. Hold on, I'm trying to find my token so that I can click it. And. 
13. Here we go. So double ones. Yikes. <laughs> Snake eyes. But the good news is your result is good enough <laughs> that it doesn't necessarily badly input, badly uh, affect your situation. Um, but basically you slam it and basically you manage, basically you stopped a bit and you've managed to stop in a little bit of a rut and basically you slam it and you get this, you get this squealing. Um, so it becomes quickly obvious to them what they're what you're doing. Um, and so multiple of them open fire. Um, as you go through. Uh, let's see if any of them hit. I guess uh, roll down a window and <laughs> prepare to return fire. Um, you're you're still going through. There's one. That, there's two. There's two guards there. Um, yep, you tipped to the roll. Oh, I don't have any tokens out there. That's why. It's like, what are you doing? You can't do that. Look, random Nazi soldier. There he is. Roll the dice. Skill of eight. Roll dice. Skill of eight. Okay. So eight and nine. Um, so basically they will ping your vehicle. Uh, basically you'll you'll hear metal basically pinging off of good Detroit steel. Um, as it were. Basically as these shots go whining by. Um, they manage not to hit the windshield, but you basically you give me one more driving roll. As you Say that again. Car, give me one more driving roll. Okay. Okay. So one of them jumps out in front to try to line up a shot, um, believing that for some reason you will slow down. <laughs> I'm going to assume you don't. Nope. <laughs> okay. So everyone in the car will hear a thump and then a, a series of thumps on the roof and then a thump on the back um, as a as the, as the uh, North Pole Nazi goes over the roof. Um, is, anyone, is anyone actually rolling down the window and taking a shot at the other guy as he continues to fire? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. Yeah. I figure I got stuck in the I middle. fire so back. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Give me a tackle. Well, this is what I do. I ride shotgun. <clears throat> Get out. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, everybody womp, should have womp, a window womp, seat. Womp. And me without my uh, soundboard today. <laughs> so, Martine and <clears throat> Michael will give me attack rolls. Yeah, attack rolls inbound. All right, remind me how to do the attack roll. Click on your figure, click on roll dice, assuming you set that up that way. I did. And then add whatever value is next to whatever skill you're using to attack. In your case, it's going to be uh, Gun. guns, because that is what they have rolled this, archery into. Does this count as the beginning of a fight? Uh, yes, for the 20 seconds that this fight is probably going to last. That's fine. Hey, that's my quarry. Okay. Can I be the first one to attack? Because if we do, because if I'm the quickest draw, you uh, you and all your allies get plus one to attack values for the rest of the first sequence. Oh, well, this, well, this poor book only really had an attack value, the defense value of like 10. Um, so, <laughs> so both of gone. you... <laughs> yeah, so basically an arrow thuds, basically where you guys can describe how you how your shots land. Uh, the upshot is he is not walking away, and he is not triggering any alarm. Huh. Yeah, the... the uh, basically, I'm using that, that arrow to uh, line up my sights. Blast them with the shotgun as we go by. Bam. He flails. I, uh, you good? I just aim to turn him into a porcupine. Okay. Uh, so he goes flailing backwards, basically gets basically, basically the first arrow, the arrow lands into him, throwing him backwards, and then the shotgun picks him up, the last picks him up, 
throws him through the window, but the glass window of the booth, spraying glass and basically glass and uh, blood everywhere as he falls to the ground on the other side. Uh, he will not be coming back. So twenty, you basically you roar into oh. the Woo-hoo. into the complex. Um, they're usual, like the usual, like you know where the, you can see where the where, the, where Elven basically like the Elf village is. There's a, like some hot chocolate stands and other stuff, but the only building that is really well lit and obviously has people in it at this point, um, is the main factory a little bit more down the road, uh, which obviously has. Basically, all its lights on, lights are all around it, um, and it has uh, basically evil looking light is kind of flickering out of some of the windows and things like that. Where normally you picture Santa's uh, Santa's workshop is kind of have this picturesque, warm firelight glow coming out of it. This is kind of more ominously, basically, more Ugh. of a sometimes more of a cool light, sometimes more of a green flickering light. Um, all of the different colors as they kind of uh they flicker through it. Oh no. That deserves being checked out, I think. Yep. Yeah. Concur. Shall we peek through the window so that I can do some snipage if ne- if necessary? Are you I gonna mean... try to be stealthy after we rolled up here like this? Uh, yeah. Well, the question is, <laughs> did our uh, entrance provoke any uh, interest from anyone else? No immediate response that you can see. So basically, the village look is basically oddly quiet and devoid of life. No lights in the windows or anything? Nope. The only building that has lights on is the factory. And the two, it's the security booth you just kind of blew through. This doesn't make any sense. If they had already taken over the North Pole, why did they bring us up there? Because they were flying the plane too. Right? It's very confusing. This doesn't smell right. I don't like this. And no, I don't mean how stinky the Grinch is. (laughs) smells fishy. Yeah, I think we need to see if we can get some reconnaissance before we shoot anything else. That's legit. Now you're going to take the fun out of everything. I said before, not okay. instead of. Okay, okay. I'll get um, Yeah, so what can, yeah, like, if we go up to the side of the warehouse, what can we see? Are there windows or other openings we can look through? I mean, basically, in terms of the, there is a very, like, traditional, again, this, is, this looks like the traditional Santa Claus village factory painting, um, but it's in the front. But you can see off to the side that there are definitely more concessions to a modern uh a modern factory, as it were, with lots of uh, basically like loading docks and bigger doors and things like that. Like the front door has like looks like it would door basically has Christmas lights strung up on it. It basically has a wide sweeping set of steps that lead up to a large front double door uh, type thing, basically type type area. Uh, and there are lots of lots of homey looking more home looking basically more like residential looking glass windows in the front which is where all the light basically a lot of that light is streaming from and then around the sides it's definitely a more business like large factory industrial uh, basically so you got those really big tall narrow windows um you have they have loading docks and stuff like that that you can see um off to the sides um Again, does not look to have any. Basically, no one seems to be moving around outside. Hmm. But there is definitely, like, you can see smoke and a lot of other stuff coming from basically from lots of chimneys and other stuff uh, on the roof of the factory. Uh, and there's definitely all the lights and things like that. You can definitely catch 
basically even as you basically as you start creeping basically creeping the car in that direction you can see movement from inside as whatever whatever light sources there are have figures passed in front of it which throw weirdly distorted shadows uh ranging from humanoid to more monstrous Kind of vote that we go ahead and uh, slip in one of the doors. <clears throat> yeah, unless... like unless and, and, unless Archie wanted to peek in a window, like they said. I'm just not the stealthiest person out there. Oh, no, no, I will make an entrance right there with you. I'm going to sneak in a window. I'm going to sneak by a window and see if there's anything to snipe before we just barge in. Like uh, like the lunatics everybody knows we are. Um, I'll, I'll go with Archie. I'll get out my uh, rifle out of the trunk before we leave the car. Okay. So you're slowly creeping up to the window. Um, so are the other two, basically, are the other two, Clarence and Chris, are you waiting for them as they walk up, or are you just instantly trying to sneak in? Or trying to give us a walk in, as it were? Well, doing I just shrug and look at Chris, your lead. <laughs> All right. Um, I will uh, give Archie just a second. Three, okay. two, one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Open the door and I, first, actually, shotgun ready. <laughs> Open the door, point it in. Um, shotgun ready as well, but just I'm aiming above him. <laughs> Step in around the corner. So everybody okay. else can get in. So what set of doors are you going in? Are you going in the front main, like the very definitely Christmassy looking? Oh, I figured we'd Windows at least do or... a side door. I mean, okay. like <laughs> you're going in more of the white, more of a warehouse side door type thing. God, I hope so. <laughs> Loading dock. Like yeah. there's there's ridiculous, and then there's just you know over the top. Okay. So you come basically you come into what is very obviously a large factory floor type thing um and with the and you can see basically you're like immediately hit by a, like a bunch of weird noises basically there's shouting there's basically there's basically again that basically that terrible there there are orders being given in a terribly accented uh basically basically fake german accented english um mm -hmm. Uh, basically it being shouted loudly and there are several other voices responding in a combination of bad German and just English that's trying to sound bad German. Uh, and you can basically, most of it is coming from what feels like the more center, you're kind of in a, a loading area, um, which there, this, this area seems to have a bunch of basically like racks and other stuff where Items would be loaded up, um, but there's nothing in here currently. There are like and there are empty boxes. There are shreds of Christmas wrap, basically all over the place. Um, it looks basically it looks more like the day after Christmas um, in a particularly <laughs> messy household than the, basically the days leading up to Christmas, as it were. Um. So you're basically you're in that situation. So Archie and Sam basically creep up to a window, um, and basically peering inside, um, basically you can see the fact that the fa basically that the factory floor is awash with basically lots of people running around and basically stacking up stuff and shoving other stuff out of the way, and it's just kind of chaos and there are several different groups of people there appear to be but most of the people are wearing that same green trimmed uniform with the red air with the red armband um hmm. and most of you can see you can you can see those 
basically all of them are running around, but the, the, the body types that fill out those uniforms seems to vary. Um, some of them are very definitely um, humans. Some of them are very definitely not. Um, basically shorter, basically tend to have more pointier ears. Um, some of them have more like more warty skin. Uh, some of them tend to have, basically some of them are uh, covered in some kind of scales and other stuff. So it's a wide collection of humanoids. But they, again, they basically the joining factor is uh, the fact that they're all most they're all wearing that uniform. Um, the, the elves are wearing. Yes. Hmm. Just like basically the the major thing you're noticing is basically while there's is very definitely a factory workshop type situation with conveyor belts and machines for with workbenches and other stuff, your traditional Santa Clausian uh setup and warehouse. But the none of that work seems to be going on. Some of the machines are still on and they're still basically spinning stuff out or wrapping stuff or things like that, but they mostly seem to be unattended. Um, there just seems to be a lot of other activity running around. Uh, most of it seems to be focused on four uh, wooden pillars that basically that seem to be set up around the place. Um and you can see the fact that it's great. most of the activity are like they're piling stuff up around those, um, basically boxes and other stuff. Uh, and they're running back and they're grabbing other stuff and they're bringing it back towards that, basically to that area. Some of them seem to be on Patrisky, like there's the usual catwalks and things like that. And some of them seem to be walking a more patrol route. Some of them are just standing around, like basically there seems to be kind of a uh, on the different side of it, there seems to be more of a party type area, basically where people are kind of standing around, and basically there is a uh, a banner that you can't quite make out that's hung over like a giant punch bowl that seems to have some kind of milky concoction in it, and there are large plates of Christmas oh. treats all set up along a wall. Um, and these individuals seem to be just kind of greedily and basically shoving stuff in their face and slurping down this whatever drink this is and laughing, pointing at the poles. And then basically, you do notice there's going to big thing that you will all you will both notice is that they seem to be occasionally glancing towards a tall platform that kind of overlooks all of it, which has um, a large throne, a large pair of thrones, as it were, with uh, plush red velvet cushions and a large door behind it. Um, that is currently empty. Uh, okay. Can we tell from where we are who seems to be in charge? <clears throat> there are definitely certain individuals you can mark off as being officer types. Um, are they elves or are they people? or? Um, mostly the officers are human. Um, what let's be 20 and uh, Martin, or rather Sam and Archie. You will know, basically, you will occasionally get glimpses of some kind of basically another individual who is taking orders, which seems to be moving through at a relatively rapid pace that seems to be covered in green fur. Green fur can uh, can. Archie and I see Clarence and Chris from here? Not from there, no. Okay. <clears throat> so, Clarence, basically, jumping back to Clarence and Chris, uh -huh. um, you will start to basically, assuming you start to move deeper in, uh -huh. um, basically, you will, you'll hear all of this noise. Basically, they can, uh -huh. uh, basically, Archie and Sam can kind of, basically, kind of faintly hear this through the windows. But you're getting hit with all of it. Basically, just the machinery noises and basically all of that, and the shouting and the talking and things like that. Um, as you come around, and you'll see, basically, you can kind of peek around the corner, and you'll definitely see all this bustle of activity. You will only really catch just all the people moving around the machines and like a couple of the totems you can see yep. from your angle, and of course, you can see the giant platform up top uh, that has the thrones and things like that. That seems to be an overlook. 
Awesome. So there's an overlook point. Do I would we have to go up in the factory to get up to the top of that? With the platforms where people are looking over? Yeah. Basically you don't see any obvious way to get there. I mean there are basically you would have to cross the factory floor. You're guessing that there are probably some doors on that R wall underneath that platform or near that but near that side. That in order to, to do that back. Yep. We we have to we have to cross empty space, I'm assuming, but do we have to walk by a lot of people? Yeah. Basically you're off to a side area essentially, uh -huh. which is essentially loading and shipping. Um, so are there the any factory. clip are there any clipboards or ladders laying around? Yes. Or or um forklifts. Yes. If if you walk with a purpose carrying a clipboard or a ladder, no one's gonna question you. Fair point. Well if the ladders are long enough, we could just climb the ladder to get up there. forklift might also get us up there i mean <laughs> to say nothing of causing some havoc <laughs> all right uh archie uh, and uh sam you will you will you will catch sight of them kind of peeking out around the corner you can definitely see them since you're knowing what and where to look and what to look for as it were all right does anybody have any like do, does there look like and there's any um uh, uh what you call it um you know uh, one of those things fireworks <laughs> or anything explosive that we could um trigger to create chaos and mayhem big bada boom I mean yeah there's a basically you can definitely see there is a Clearly marked an OSHA compliant section um, that OSHA is compliant. basically labeled uh, <laughs> basically fireworks and other explosives. Um, oh, perfect! There's absolutely no smoking. All the signs and the warning things that's in boxes and things like that around there. Right, yellow cabinets set, on the wall. Yeah, yeah. I will set fire to fire some extinguishers arrows nearby and start shooting fiery arrows into the. No okay. fire section. You have a problem. Yeah. Okay. There is glass between you and that. I was just going to ask, can we open this window? It does not look like it opens without force. How big are the panes of glass? I mean, they're basically, assuming if you're at the front, they're fairly large because they're, again, they're going with that, uh, Santa's warm, has been that big Santa painting type, large, friendly open windows with lots of light pouring out. <clears throat> and you can tell the fact that it all kind of goes down into basically. So you climbed up the stairs to here, and then everything kind of immediately goes straight down. You're kind of closer to the level of the catwalks up here, basically, when you're looking through the windows. Hold on, I'm looking at my character sheet. Hey, real quick. Yeah, I mean, well, Santa's doing that, Clarence. Do you, want, do you want to climb the ladder with me, or no, aren't aren't we using the ladder to get across the floor and then go up somewhere? Oh, we can do that. Let's do it. Clipboards and ladders. We'll just walk across. I carry the ladder. You lead the way with the clipboard. Got it. Because no one's going to look at both of us and think I need help carrying that ladder. Yeah, that's Glad fair. That's fair. Clipboards and shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> now you do see an obvious problem with your uh situation, obviously. That's the fact that you lack the uniform, which is fairly mandatory throughout the floor. Even with temp workers? You don't see any temp workers currently. Now, you could try to do it anyway. I mean, but you kind of feel like you might stick out a little. I think. Are there any, um, there's, there's probably boxes of stuff here, right? Any boxes labeled costumes? Yeah. 
I'm I'm going for the medical doctor one. I want to just find a white lab coat. Okay. <laughs> white lab coat and a clipboard. We got this. Okay. Clarence could just be like, "Have we you could seen just me? Say, they don't, they don't make the uniform this size. <laughs> <laughs> we could just pretend we're from OSHA. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to make OSHA jokes, we might as well pretend we're from OSHA. All right. So I need to know how this game, or all of you, because it's a movie, and so therefore timing wise always works out perfectly. You're all, this game, is everyone planning on entering the building at this point? Yes. Yeah, yeah. but I haven't mm -hmm. figured out how we get in yet, Archie. Through the window? <laughs> We open the door and we say this is, and we say loudly, this is an OSHA uh, inspection and go from there. I thought you were, I thought you were going to blow some stuff up. No, no. Yeah. I, uh, I, as soon as I'm in there, but I have glass between me and then. So my OSHA inspection is going to involve blowing some stuff up. Yeah. Is there an entry point from where we are to get into the catwalk area? Um, there are some ladders and other stuff that are nearer to the door, but that's on the other side, on the inside, yes. You have so to there's open... a door and a window where we are? Yeah, basically, essentially, if you open the door, you end up in kind of a, basically, you're up on the, the stairs that lead up to the big door, and you're kind of peering over, looking into the windows on either side of that, is what I'm going with. Uh, here, ah. if you go in, there's a lobby area, basically, it's a, it's a, it's just kind of a, Basically, more of a glass, basically glass walled. Uh, so you can look out onto the factory floor, um, and there are very obvious doors that lead down into the factory area, and there are doors that lead up to a like where a tour would walk around the catwalk to see the factory, as it were. Do I? Can I? Is the door unlocked? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm going in then. I don't okay. need to break a window. Uh, You'll find yourself yeah. in that glass lobby area. And Hunter wants to get up on the catwalk and and not show everyone that she's here. Like, provide overwatch, basically. Okay. And maybe do their little turn on the catwalk. All right, so, um, so basically, in terms of basically, uh, basically, uh, the, the, in terms of Clarence and Chris, you glad basically, Chris is wearing a white lab coat and carrying a clipboard. Clarence is just carrying a ladder and is just you're walking out into the chaos on the floor, correct? Sounds about right, yeah. Okay. Yep. So it's crowded and things like that. And so you're carrying a basically a, a large extension ladder. Um, and you will get somebody will basically she basically bump into you, bump into the ladder and yell at you and be like, Hey, what are you doing here? What are you doing with that ladder? I'm I'm moving it. We're doing our inspection. Just move along. All right. Bounty Hunter, give me Intrusion. Big Bruiser, give me Intimidation. Those are both listed under right. your skills. Yep. Uh, while they're doing that. Um, yeah. So Archie and the Maverick Cop are just... Basically, Maverick Cop is going up to the, up to the catwalk. Um, give me a police roll as you basically make you... Basically, as you've done this undercover sneak in work all the time obviously um an archer you're just going in opening a door and as soon as you basically are just shouting into the room and then firing an arrow is that what i'm hearing from you correct i am providing the distraction okay looks like clarence is trying to avoid being too intimidating <laughs> that's what my dice say anyway I mean, that's still relatively intimidating for basically for most people. Um, so 
Uh, there's, the the guy kind of looks at kind of glances, kind of looks weirdly at Chris and just shakes his head. This guy rolls his eyes and but then kind of looks closer at uh, uh, at Clarence and just decides that this is somebody else's problem, uh, not his. <laughs> He's got better places to go. Um, and he will start. He'll just kind of back up, start backing away. Um, More accurately, looked at Clarence's biceps. <laughs> He looks up the ladder he's carrying with like one hand. Yeah. Um, Shotgun's not the only <laughs> guns I have. Um, Boom. And then basically you're all kind of, you're like, you're, everything is working out great. You're fine. You're basically, every, nobody seems to be pay, pay any special attention when suddenly you hear someone shouting at top and the basically as they, uh, and basically as the shouting continues, the room, you know, gets quieter as that ripple of, What's going on? What's what are they saying? And you just hear someone shouting. Go ahead, Martine. OSHA inspection. Shoot, shoot, shoot. And then you hear arrows thumbing through the air. Um, give me a uh, guns check. I think I already rolled it. I did. Okay, thirteen. Okay. Yep. Um. So you will send several arrows and, into that. Um, yes. Oh, I was going to say if the if I have any like key things I can do to like shoot multiples or whatever, I'll I'll you know all guns blazing. Okay. Um, well, basically, you don't need basically because it's cinematic. You don't need multiple to do what you're trying to do here. Your first basically your first arrow will thunk home. And there'll be that just brief pause as everyone turns and looks basically near it. And basically they all kind of stare at the burning arrow that they'll stare back up at you. And you'll see the one one of the people that's nearest the fireworks start the mouth. What kind of and then everything just explodes in that corner. Basically, fireworks start going off everywhere. Basically, that guy immediately gets gets flown. You get the Wilhelm scream. Um, as he gets flown, if it's uh, flung across the, it's across the room, um, chaos promptly erupt, shouts, um, basically you can hear somebody, you hear several voices shouting over the dead, we have intruders, we have intruders, hunt them down, kill them. And, and I will respond with something along the lines of, huh, I'm pretty sure this is an OSHA violation. Okay. Everyone go ahead and roll the initiative. Uh, that oh, is a no. single die and add your speed. Nice. Come with me and we'll be in a world of OSHA violations. Oh, that's a bad roll. All right. Uh, D6, not 20. And uh, speed. I don't know dice, so I just I rolled a six on a d6, and then speed was five, so eleven. Yep, you're on eleven. <clears throat> I have fast draw, so I get plus two to my roll. Since I shot first, does that mean I we get the uh, if you're the first combatant to attack in a fight, you gain plus two on guns on all of your attacks, and you so that means I get to do that since. Do my first arrows shooting into the fireworks count as first attack? Yes, you get to do that. You all get plus one to all the things attack related and plus two to guns. Oh, oh no, just plus one. I get the plus two. Got it. Okay. If you are the first combatant to attack in a fight, you gain plus two guns on, on that attack. You and all of your allies gain plus one to attack values for the rest of the first sequence. Basically, sequence sequences everything until everyone hits zero, as it were. Okay. So oh, I see. Okay. Got several of those. He's not really going. I found ways to blowing stuff up as an archer. I'm happy. <laughs> so they're all scattered around nine. Okay. So he's going on nine. Uh, he's going. Mooks are going on six. And then 
the officers are going on a date. Okay. Uh, who's this guy? Hmm, who are you? Oh, that's the, the guy I recorded earlier, just uh, rolled up. So, okay. So, basically, chaos is obviously erupting. Everyone is running around shouting. Um, the guy who, the guy, the guy who, basically, the guy who are backing away, basically, was backing away from you is now booking it, screaming. Um, uh, uh, Clarence and Chris. Um, Basically, Sam, you can see that there are several, basically several guys up here who are starting to look down, uh, trying to basically trying to figure out what's going on up on the catwalk. <clears throat> oh, I should be on eight, shouldn't I? Uh, that's what you rolled, and yes. Okay. Okay. So, Archie, you are standing up there. You can see all these individuals kind of running around panicking. Um, there's that, that one quarter of the room is just kind of a flaming, exploded mess. Uh, bodies and basically boxes explodes. There's still the occasional fireworks shooting off, going in, there's going in some direction. Uh, I have a clarifying question. Yes, the plus one that I'm getting from Chris's ability does that mean I'm on nine right now, or is it only when I'm attacking? Um, the, the soul, the sniper, that's not from, uh, is Chris giving an ability? Yeah. Like whatever, what was it that you did or not Chris? Um, Martine, uh, Archie. Archie's giving you a bonus to your attack rolls. To attack rolls, not yep. to initiative. Got it. Yep. Plus one to every, any attack you do during this first sequence. Got it. Thank you. Archie. Um, I'm gonna start, uh, does anybody look more boss-like than the rest? Like, they might be in charge? I mean, there are, there are very definitely officers of some sort. Um, uh, there are, uh, basically, basically some of them, basically some of them look human, some of them look more elven. I will go for one, I will try to shoot out one of the officers. Okay. That one that looks like they're important. Okay. Um so normally oh. normally I would be like you're firing into a smoke filled room with people running around. Uh that would be adverse conditions, but because of you, you get a plus two immunity bonus because So you have a bonus on this. Okay. Uh nice. Sixteen. So you will slam this game. What are they going okay? One of the guys running this game, one of the officers is attempting to stand in the out in the open and be self-important is pointing in directions and pointing at you and basically basically shouting in badly basically in bad high school German at you about <laughs> um broom das Mädchen kill tot tot um, <laughs> um and, then, and then an arrow slams into his side and he uh, grunts um so <laughs> Currently, that is at sixteen. He is a officer. He has a uh, defense of as an officer. He has a defense of thirteen, which means it's a uh, basically a three. Um, so, being extremely offended by his very bad German, I will go ahead and spend a key point in volley. Okay, so you're going to do the double damage. So, normally, basically, you had a you had an outcome of you had a smackdown of three. Gigi, you got three bonus to your weapon damage, which uh the shotgun is doing what? How much? Thirteen? People uh, have shotguns. I have a the guns I have a fourteen on my guns. No, damage wise. Um Oh uh This is for um Clarence or Chris. Oh, I don't know. Or, or Sam. Actually, you know what? I have their character sheets. I can just look at them. Uh, 13 is that one. 13 is that one. Uh, the Smith and Weapon Revolver is actually the most powerful at 14, so you get a 13. Uh, so your archers, your arrows are doing 13 points of damage, so 13 plus 3 is 16. Um, but you're choosing to spend the key points, uh, one key point and three shots to deal the same wound point, wound points again to the same opponent. Um, so you will normally get dropped down to 10 because that's three shots. 
and then you're dropping down to seven to do double that, which will be which puts you at uh 32 points of damage. Uh, he can only take 30, so basically, he is still mid gesture when basically suddenly an arrow one arrow punctures his left lung. And actually, it's up to you. How do you want him to how do you want your two arrows to hit him? Um, I, I'm kind of thinking the whole like s straight into the like straight into the head, like just like dunks him into the wall and kind of lets him hang there, like kind of like 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 a uh, cartoon style. Right in the eyes. Right in the eyes. <laughs> now I was so thinking the mouth because I'm offended by the germ by the the, the 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 despicable excuse of pretending to speak German. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That well, basically so basically one of us one of them is gesturing and suddenly he's cut off screaming. Um that brings us to twelve. Basically he's nailed to a rack of presents. <laughs> so that means it's Chris. Yep, Chris. So as we're Running across the factory, mm -hmm. do I get to see the evidence of the green guy at all? Oh yeah, basically you okay. will. Um, like he is obviously he is in the fight, so he is automatically your quarry. Uh, so Got it. yes, you will basically you will very definitely as you're heading in that direction, you will spot a green furred individual yep. heading in a different direction, heading towards yep. the staircase, uh, basically towards Archie, as it were. At that point in time, I am going to immediately. I mean. Get within reasonable range and pop off as many shots as I can. All right, so I'm gonna go. Let me let me look. So I need to to move over there and then take a shot. So you're you're gonna duck between basically you're going to peel off uh, yep. from Clarence and start ducking between weaving between the various racks of basically the workshop areas. Um, Correct. Then basically set up cover and just start firing shots in the direction that you see the green, basically the Grinch heading. Exactly. Okay. Uh, just go ahead and give me an attack roll. Um, all right. Because this is against my quarry, I get a bonus. Um... Now, do I need to declare at this point if I'm going to use the fortune? Uh, yes. I'm going to use fortune, and I get to add a d6 to that. Okay. There we go. Let's make that an 18. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, he has a toughness of that, or a defense of that. Uh, that's 18. So go ahead and give me your. Basically, what's the damage on that weapon? 16. Okay. So that, minus that. Basically, you will definitely clip him in the shoulder and he'll basically. Screams something about puppy dog tails. <laughs> and those guys, he spins and spots you and be like, Chris, didn't think you'd dare hunt me over to the North Pole. Bring it, Grinch. Uh, so that, that. <laughs> he will dodge to disrupt some of it. So that will disrupt your roll. So you only have two, so 16 minus toughness. Okay. I've got your lead right here. I'm the only one who'll be giving out gifts this year. <clears throat> oh, no. 
Um, that brings us to Clarence. All right. So, well, I guess the uh, perhaps at the fan. Um, how many are around me that I can take out with this ladder I'm holding? Uh, there <laughs> are basically multiple mooks near you um, and probably at least one officer. I'm if just going to start news. tearing through people with the ladder because okay. it has better reach than my uh, baseball bat. So you're just going to swing in place. He's basically spin in place using the ladder. Okay. Uh, give me martial arts. All right. So that is a 12 with a plus two bonus on the first one and the plus one with uh, the add on. So that is 12, 15. That's boxcars. Roll again. Am I rolling the exact same thing I did last time? Yep. Roll the same thing you did last time. Okay, so 2d6 plus 15. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. Wow. Okay. Holy wow, Batman. Took my breath uh, okay. Away. So I'm good. <laughs> It's a lot so, of sixes. Yeah. Um, so you go to spin the ladder um, and just basically take out a couple of guards. And basically, the good news basically the good news is you basically a couple of mooks just get caught and basically they just get flung against the basically flung against the wall, knocked out unconscious. They're not coming back anytime soon. Um, the bad news is that as you spin. Um, your ladder manages to basically get caught in one of the basically one of the present processing machines, and you get yanked off your feet, um, and are now getting dragged backwards because by the ladder um, has hooked onto you, and you're being dragged backwards on this conveyor belt uh, towards a present basically towards a present uh, basically wrapping gift wrapping machine, boxing and gift wrapping machine. Um, as you can see, it's slammed down and basically boxes appear on the other side wrapped in. Um, and so you're basically, that is the situation you find yourself being dragged backwards towards. You're going to have to deal with that on your next turn. E. Okay. So now I drop down to eight. Drop down to eight. All right, so on nine, we'll get to Chris first, but, but more importantly, the doors on top fling open and a figure wearing a red suit steps out. Um, however, the, basically, it, is, it doesn't have a white, basically, it, well, it has white hair. It does not have a, basically, it does not have a, a white beard. It does not have a white mustache, but instead has a tiny square black mustache. Um, uh, basically, yes, it is, of course, exactly what you feared. Um, it is very obviously a clone of Adolf Hitler. Uh, Stop you know, it. You announce, you know this because he announces this at the top as he walks in. I am the clone of Adolf Hitler and I have come to take over Christmas and I will not have this disruption. A2 Hitler <laughs> clause. <laughs> um... <laughs> And so he would, oh, they will basically finally be like, I will basically, and I, basically, this is the disruption that you have come too late, you meddlesome fools. I will basically, I am here to conquer the four holidays of the December and use their power to power my evil, evil takeover. And I will make all of the children my slaves. And basically, you can see I have got the, the symbols of Christmas. He points around the room to various totem poles. Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and the New Year, and I will cover up them. Wow! Uh, I... And then he starts to chant, basically, basically lifting his hands in the air. He starts to chant, um, and basically, <laughs> all the pillars start glowing with an evil light. And that's what he's doing on his. That's what he does for his actions. So, Chris, you're up. 
the Grinch laughs oh, and cackles at basically and says, "You <laughs> now you see the problem you have found yourself in. You may have thought you were hunting me, but it is I who have led you into a trap." All right, so. Am I standing right roughly in the middle of all of these pillars? Yeah, roughly, sure. I mean, there's a lot of things between you and the pillars because, again, it's a factory floor. So there are crates yeah. and boxes and racks and other stuff. But you, they're tall enough that you could generally see them peeking out above. Out above. Can I climb up onto one of the crates to get a better vantage point? Then I will do that. Is yeah. that my full action, or can I still make You can do attack? something else. That's a, that's a movement type action, so... Okay, then I'm going to climb up on there, and then I'm going to... Let's start with the New Year totem, if I can tell what they are. And I'm going to shoot it. Um, they're, they're basically... They are, they're just, they are covered in... Uh, lots of different symbols and things like that, so... Give me a give me a give me a role you think would allow you to figure out what each token pole would be. Pick a skill. And um, give me the reason assume... for it. I'm going to assume that that would be like a detective. Sure. Skill. I would have accepted truck stops and cheap motels, but uh, I'll... <laughs> this like that makes sense too. <laughs> Ooh, ouch. Okay, you have God. basically you have no idea which one is which. Basically, you're kind of staring at them, going, "This is over my pay grade. This is all that bathroom stuff." Whatever. I'm just gonna pick one and shoot it. Okay, you're It'll just gonna start, start shooting a totem. Okay, I'm gonna shoot a totem. Okay, they started glowing. They look like some kind of magic nonsense. So we're gonna take those things out. Um, that does not give me the quarry bonus. Oof. Ouch. All right. Most of your most, most of your shots go wide, but I'm assuming you're still firing your shotgun. Yeah, correct. So basically, some of the buckshot will kind of graze it, um, and basically sparks of light will fly off of it, um, and you'll suddenly feel like some basically like, kind of like tiny buckshot kind of smacks into your side. Mine? Yes. Bouncing off? More like equal and opposite force. Oh, no. All right. Attacking the totems directly, bad idea. Do I take damage for this? No, you missed the totem, so you only took, basically, you didn't take any actual damage. So, you can so hear the Grinch cackling down, down below. Four, I believe. Three for the attack and one for the movement. No, you're moving as part of it. It's part of it. Okay, shot. it's just okay. three. Got it. Okay. Going, to, going to eight. Uh, Clarence and Sam. Basically, Sam is probably the faster of the two. So, Sam, you go first. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay, I'm still up on the catwalk. Yep, you can see there are a couple. There's at least one officer up here and several mooks. Uh, basically, they are basically looking down, and obviously, some basically one of them is definitely pointing and laughing at Clarence. Uh, basically, basically saying, basically, ah, look at the Doomcoff. He has gotten stuck in the machine. He will become wrapped and be a Christmas present for us. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> ah, you're making this hard to play serious, dude. Um. This is not meant to be serious. If you were no, trying, to play, this serious, trying to play this serious, <laughs> because I she's failed. a maverick cop, not <laughs> like it's character. I'm trying to be in character. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Um, Die uh, hard. Basically, Bruce Willis is a maverick cop. Uh, um, Hunter has been Don't carrying his character, lethal weapon. <laughs> her uh winchester yep uh so she's gonna take aim at uh hitler claws okay um so that's just an attack roll plus my winchester the first stat on my winchester right yep okay
14. Okay. Uh, that is currently missing. Dang. Oh, wait. There was a plus one on that. Ah, you're right. 15. That will hit with a total of zero. Okay. So, uh, let's see. What's the damage on that weapon? Uh, wh uh, what number is the damage number? Uh, first number of the three. Thirteen. Yep. You will grunt slightly. Um, basically, obviously, sorcerer's Hang magic is wait. protecting him. Hang on. Yes. Uh... Can I consider the clone of Hitler to be a murderer and a torturer? Yes. Okay. Questions you, to, questions you have to answer when playing Feng Shui. <laughs> I mean, IRL, hello. <laughs> but he's a clone, so I had to ask. Uh, so I would have had plus three, actually, including the one from Martin. Okay. Obviously, I hit, but I wanted to clarify that. Okay. Um, Your bullets mean nothing. The bullets see mean nothing. So I didn't do any damage. Oh, you did, but basically oh. he did. He's he's powering through it. I I see. He's being a a total action movie trope. Yes, I see. All right. Uh. So that think... was yours. Yeah. Uh, next up is Clarence. Have to remember which mute button I actually used. Um, okay, I'm trying to make sure I don't get gift wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> so how am I caught on the ladder? Because obviously, I'd, otherwise, I'd just let go. Um, basically, it is hooked. Basically, it is caught in basically somehow in one of your belt loops. It does that annoying snagging thing where basically one of the one of its one of its extending prongs has caught into one of your uh, belt loops. Well, I'm going to just see if I can rip it out of the belt loop. Okay, that's some tough denim. I'm a Dude. tough person. No, no, I mean it's tough because it didn't just rip oh, off okay. on the <laughs> conveyor belt. I'm not sorry. Um, uh, go ahead and give me a martial arts check. Okay, so this is a twelve, and then it's plus uh plus one still. Yeah, sure. Okay. Eleven. Okay. You're able to basically you're able to rip free, um, but you are still on the conveyor belt at this point. Um, there are guards and other basically and basically other people kind of streaming by you. Then I jump off and let the guards break my fall. <laughs> okay, give me another martial arts check. Well, all right. Are you trying to get one or two? Or are you aiming for? I'm officer? big. Let's go two. Okay. So it's a twelve of two. It's minus two. That's ten. They have a defense of eight, so that will hit. That will definitely crush two of them. Those guys, you kind of jump wide. You're gonna basically pro wrestler style, uh, and basically catch two of them around the neck and basically bear them down to the ground, and they. Cushion their fall. Cushion your fall, rather. Their fall is not cushioned. They crack their heads off of, basically bounce off of several table, basically a toy construction table. Uh, Legos go scattering everywhere, as this was apparently the Lego construction section. Uh, several officers were fired. Several officers were off of open fire. Uh, officers are going. Nine. Okay. So one of them is going to target 
uh, Sam, since they're up here. Nine is not enough to get through Sam's defense, so that's a miss. So that'll be five. One of them will go for, um, we'll start shooting at Archie. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, that is way a miss. Um, one of them is going to try to slam into the boxes, uh, crates that, that, uh, Chris is stacked up. That's a martial arts check. And this guy ends up mostly just hurting his shoulder more than actually moving the stacks of boxes. Um, looking down, you realize that the boxes are all labeled toy anvils. Um, what are you doing here? Um, and that one is going to go for Clarence. Cannot roll. Uh, the Grinch, however, will take a clear shot. Basically, basically, will bring his hands together and say, let me show you a little trick that Adolf taught me. I can now summon the power of basically of Krampus and use it against you. Take this. Okay. And he throws a blast of sorcerous energy at you. Um... And the attack fails automatically. Due diligence. Yes. Ah. So basically, you manage to you realize that this is a possibility and manage to roll to the side. Uh, basically, just barely done. Basically, as part of the box gets ripped off and basically flies back to his hand. He's like, bah, humbug. Curse you and your due diligence. Now he's Scrooge. Uh, Archie on seven. Does Har Archie have a clear line of sight to Mr. Clone Hitler, dude? Uh, sure. Then Archie is going to take a, to take, uh, take their aim and go straight for Clone Hitler, dude, right between the two eyeballs. Um, actually, I'm kind of. Yeah, yeah, right in the eyeball. Okay. Right in the Thank eyeball. you. Uh, so do the thing, do the thing, and then the plus on uh, uh plus one because of the round thingy, my bob. So that's an eighteen. Okay. He steps to the side, dropping his action by one, uh, and then the arrow thunks into the chair. Aww. Um, is there such a thing as a hero point in this in this game? There is fortune. The fortune thing. I am going to spend a fortune to take a pot shot at him again. Yep, you just you take it, you add it to whatever your total was. Um, so how do I roll fortune? Just roll a single d6. One d6, okay. Do fortune dice explode also? No. Oh, I rolled a one. Sadly, one isn't enough to get past the dodge defense. 19 so, uh, isn't enough? Not when he dodged. Gosh. Wow. Okay. Okay, so where do I track my fortune? Um, it is listed under key on your character sheet. I've been I've been oh, using so these. It's the I've... same as key for me in yep. my case. You spent, so I've one, spent two... one key and one fortune, so that's two I've, out of I've seven. Been tracking the number on my green circle on my token in roll twenty, but you do whatever I, you want. I, I have a, a note card on my desk ah, where cool. it's just tallying points. Makes sense. Chris, you're up. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna shoot the Grinch. I mean, why not? Not messing around anymore. You're a mean one. 
Mr. Grinch. 15 on the Grinch. You really are an eel. The Grinch is dodging, which is going to take three off of there. But it's going to do that. So there you are currently missing. I am currently missing? Currently missing. Oh, fortune that. There we go. Okay, that gives you an outcome of one. The one plus your damage is 17, right? That is correct. That's that. Okay. Blast a chunk out of him and cursed mistletoe. Um, several soldiers, basically several mooks will open fire. We'll see if any of them hit. Then deal with where they would actually hit. Basically, it's a hail of gunfire and uh, sorcerous bolts as the the humanoids in the uniforms all pull the guns out and start shooting, um, while the more elven-looking ones will fire bolts of red and green energy. Oh, very on theme. There's four. So miss, miss, and two hits, probably. 15 and 15, 15. Um, Sam, you're definitely basically... Uh, let's see here. They're probably divided between... Two of them are going to go for that. Okay, so... Um, Archie is 15, beat your defense. Um, my defense is, defense is 14. Okay, so that will be your defense currently, so you can spend a one shot to dodge, if you wish. I am um, or... going to spend a shot to dodge. Okay, so that shot will miss. Uh, the other one will go for Sam up on the catwalk. Um... Sam, I can just look up your defense. Your defense is 13, so you're currently being hit. You can spend a shot to dodge if you want. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, so drop yourself a shot, and you add three to your tough, you add three to your defense, bring you to 16. Okay. So that's all of those guys. Clarence, you're up. Your last action before you need to go, probably. Actually, I just got the message. I gotta go now. So, all right, have a good one, y'all. Good luck. Uh, take care. Later. I'm getting some weird. Uh, so he will continue taking swings at people. Um, we will just go ahead and roll for him. Um, Swords is 12, 13 with the bonus. Oh, okay. Man, don't have the gem roll for you. Um so he goes to he, oh he, he goes to slam into uh basically into someone that just puts his fist through a basically through a create and just rips out a uh stuffed animal and it just miss, pisses him off because this too isn't a pound puppy either. It's just some kind of squeaky toy. So now basically he's got it basically it's like stuck around his hand. And so now he's just making squeaky noises as he punches things. Um <laughs> I love it. Oh my goodness. Why am I getting such a weird oh, lowdown on my end? CPU is fine. OBS Studio, Chrome isn't doing too much. I agree, Splatter. It's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Um, then Adolf is basically going to focus in on his ritual. Um, he reaches down and points to one of the guys, basically one of the one of the uh, running around soldiers, makes a gesture, shouts, Your soul is mine! Um, and basically you see a basically green energy rip out of that individual 
Um, and he points towards one of the totems. Um, give me a number between one and four. Somebody, anybody. Three. Three. Cool. Good choice. Um, he says, I will take over Monica first. Um, and basically, a basically, he points to one of them and it starts to glow evil, evil red. Um, basically, the, the flames on it start to die. Basically, it start basically, and out pops, um, a uh, actually, it wasn't one of the soldiers, one of the officers, right? Okay, um, out pops a Roman centurion. Uh, what? Um, Ah, it is time. I have been summoned back to get my revenge. Hanaka. Jesus? No, um, Revenge on Jesus? No, it's Hanaka. Um, basically, the, the central basically, Hanukkah <laughs> is the Jews kicking, uh, it's the purpose of Hanukkah is the Jews kicking, or rather, is the, uh, that basically it takes place during the, the oil rebellion. The lasted eight days, right? Yeah. But it was during the rebel. It was during a rebellion against yes. Roman authorities. Yeah. Uh, I see. So. Oh Lord. Okay. Uh, so basically, that basically that is what he does on his action. Centurion versus firearms. Let's see. Um. Uh, okay, and the Nazis basically. So that guy is going to pop out. And I will bring him in. So evil Roman. <laughs> Pop up evil there. Roman. <laughs> Bottom overlapping. Save settings. Okay. Um. So the other Nazi officers will, will open fire. One will fire at Sam. Uh, Twelve misses. One of them will fire at uh, the one that the one that slammed into the crates is the one that died. Uh, so there's not Excellent. one at the bottom of your crate pile anymore. Uh, so one will fire at Archie. Miss, and one will fire at. Um, Clarence, and also miss. Wow, these Nazis are firing like stormtroopers. Um, appropriate somehow. <laughs> somehow appropriate. Uh, so Arch, uh, basically Archie, then Sam, then the Grinch. Archie is going to try to the to, to to go after Santa Hitler, to hit or Santa whatever whatever, and um shoot with the bow and arrow. Give me one second while you're doing that. I'm going to that is garbage. I'm, I'm gonna... going to spend a fortune. That's an eleven plus my. Fortune. I'm going to hop out of this cold and hop back in to see if I can fix. That probably does not hit. There we oh, go. That is a 14 turtle. Weird. 14. Turtle. 14 turtle. For the turtle club. <laughs> You're firing at Santa Claus? Or yes. rather, Adolf Claus? That's not Santa. <laughs> Let's not get the facts wrong here. Okay. Um, so you're a fire. A total cause. <laughs> so basically, 13 total or 16. What was your total? 14. 14. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 14. Basically, again, he bats the arrow out of the air, sneers in your direction. Pathetic. All you're getting this year is death in your stocking. Uh, Sam, you're up. <laughs> so, uh, since the, so since this 
hold on. When you hit an opponent with a, uh, no, I didn't hit him. But in, when I have the way of the wind blows, instead of a penalty under adverse conditions, you get plus two immunity bonus to attacks. Does that, the smoke that I created with all the fireworks still going off, that counts as adverse conditions, right? It did when you were firing down into the floor, not when you're firing okay. at someone close to your level. Okay. Sorry, Adolf Claus has some plot armor protections. <laughs> plot armor. Oh. Okay. I am shooting my rifle at Hitler. Okay. Um, so that'll be my 13 plus two for Justice Bringer plus the one from Martine's ability. Okay. 17. Yeah, he's got one left, so he will dodge. So currently, you're currently you're just short. That's so frustrating. Uh, you can choose okay. to add fortune to see if you can hit him. Um, yeah, let's do that. Okay, four brings them up to 19, 21, uh, which will hit. About time. Uh, okay, so 21 minus his defense, 15. So that brings him to minus the minus is three, so 18, so 21, three. What's the damage on your weapon again? 13. Four, two, 13. Okay, so three plus 13, so 16 minus his toughness, seven, nine points of damage. I will replace the blood I have spilled with yours. My Christmas gift from you will be a blood transfusion. Gross. Um, and then the Grinch is going to go after that. Um, and he will yet again basically attempt to basically fire a Krampus blast. He has begun crafting the holidays. It's be Chris. What are you? What are you going to do? You're going to follow your bounty or save the world? Choices, choices. Um, roll dice. Uh, sorcerer thirteen. Eleven misses against your defense, unless I'm badly mistaken. Chris. Uh, yes, you have missed. That misses, and he's down to action slot one. Same with Sam. Chris, you're up. All right, another uh, shot at the Grinch. Oof. Brutal. He ducks behind, basically, and basically there's an ex basically a big puff as a uh, puppy doll, basically, that basically goes basically up into... Blast of stuffing and cries out, Mama, Mama. Oh no. And it's got Mama, Mama. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Looks like little Did Cindy Lou Who isn't going to get her gift this year. Uh, Sam will mutter under her breath, What a jerk. <laughs> no, no, no. The appropriate phrase is, What a mean one. Um, what a rotter. <laughs> Soldiers will open fire. That's not what I wanted. I don't want pan view. I want select. Thank you. No one ever told you you have termites in your smile. Yeah, I wouldn't touch it, touch him with a nine and a half foot pole. A uh, 39 and a half. 39 <laughs> and a half. You're correct. My bad. Okay. Um,. 12, I don't believe, hits. Nope. 12 misses Sam. Um, bullets go flying and whining all over the place as they continue to fire. There are explosions and basically, uh, basically as wood, basically as wood crates crack and basically toys fall onto the ground. Um, a toy car gets smacked and basically gets shot across the floor. Uh Basically, these little toy carts collapse. His bullets go everywhere, but don't hit anything. 
Uh, Clarence, his hand still wrapped in squeaky, is going to attempt to uh, engage the evil Roman soldier who is heading in his direction. Um, so it takes a swing at him, and he gets a bonus because of the fact that uh, he missed. So he has a total of 14 now. But cannot roll. Good morning. That's great. Apparently he's not used to having a squeaky toy, so it's great. He slams it into the wall, which 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 kind of destroys a crate and would be very impressive. It wasn't for the fact that A, a bunch of marbles then spill out and kind of clatter oh, no. onto the floor. Um and then B, it's also followed by a beep noise as he slams beep. it into the crate. Beep, beep. Uh Um, the evil Roman oh, that's the wrong that's not the page I want I want this one um, okay so he is going to basically he basically so basically, so basically summons energy in the form of a Roman Cestus and swings it at Clarence. Um, evil Roman. 13. Oof. 20. Slams into him. Um, uh, do, 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 20. Clarence. He's out of shots, so he can't dodge. Clarence has a defense of 12. So 12 minus 20 is 8. Plus his damage is 10, so 18 points of damage, but minus his toughness of 12, so 6 points of damage. I think that's actually the first hit he's gotten. I think that's left over from last time. Um, oops, come back here. Uh, so basically, the cut, basically, he kind of, he's like, ah, I have taken your blood. And basically, I will use it, basically, I will use it in the defense of the Holy Roman Empire. Well, not Holy Roman, sorry. The defense of the Roman Empire. It's not holy yet. Uh, what What do you mean we lose to this? There's a bunch of weird people who we fed the lions. Um, he's done. Not the officers up in fire. One on Sam. One on Archie. And one on Chris. That was the one that's near uh, Clarence is not going to get between him and the Roman. All of those miss. Good job, guys. Again, more bullets whining, crates exploding. And that brings us to everybody on one. Uh, Archie and Sam, and then the Grinch and Santa Hitler. Well, I'm going to um I'm going to continue going after uh, after evil claws. Yep. Right, that may be pointless, but uh oh yeah, I need to click my character. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, 17 plus 1 is 18 to hit. Okay, now he has to make a choice. Uh, if he dodges, he loses all the rest of his action for the turn. Uh, he'll take it, so... Volley! <laughs> you can't volley, you don't have enough shots. <coughs> uh, okay. So you will do three plus whatever your damage is, so 13. I believe currently so you're up to 16 damage on him. Minus his defense, minus his toughness. Seven, seven, nine. That's unfortunate. I thought I was going to get to volley. So it's the same reason why he can't dodge and the same reason why you can't volley. We are uh, going so to have to head off here in the very, very near future. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe the end of this round of initiatives would be a good stopping point. 
Okay. Uh, so Sam, go. Uh, all right. Uh, Hunter will take another shot at um Hitler with her Winchester. Please hit. Please hit. <laughs> That'd be great. You can do it. Thirteen plus. Whoops, that's uh needs a plus two plus three. Nice. Twenty five. That is a significant chunk of damage. That might do it with extras. <laughs> um so that definitely hits. Uh twenty two twenty five minus his defense brings him to ten. Um then ten plus your damage is what again? Thirteen. Okay, so that brings you to twenty-three. Uh, basically, he was currently at twenty-seven, and bosses generally have fifty. So twenty-seven plus thirteen is exactly it is forty, not fifty. I can't do math. Hmm. Wow. So we've reduced him. By forty or two forty? Two forty. Um, but wow, let's be, well let's be, We will go ahead. Let's be, and so. Uh, there's actually not a good way to how do we wrap this up here. Um. So basically, that's it's your action. Uh, so what will end up happening, um, is that you will continue firing, uh, basically at him. Uh, and basically we'll go ahead and draw. Basically, we could either do one of two things. Um, I am sadly out next week, so we cannot continue this next week. Actually, am I out next week? I think uh, yes. I'm out on Tuesday. Monday, I'm still in town. Tuesday, I'm out. Uh, so we can either continue this in two weeks, if you wish to continue in the Christmas spirit and basically pass the uh, pass the twelve days of Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, it's all good. I want to take Hitler down. Hello. I want to finish this. Are you kidding? Okay. Me? All right. So we will go ahead and basically. So we will wrap up this round. Uh, so the Grinch will, of course, open. We will basically, basically uh, laugh and cackle. All of your bullets and your guns, and you can't do anything. You cannot scratch the power of this. the sorceress Nazi power. Um. <laughs> Oh, but we will. And so the he Grinch will, doesn't Grinch, know us very well, do we? Uh, the Grinch will hit uh, this guy again at uh, Chris. Oof, 11. Still misses. <laughs> I won't do it. No. So he's out and done. This guy, he's just like, ah! Curse you and your dodging. Stand forth and fight like a proper man. Um, I thought I was the coward here. Um, and Adolf Kaws will, of course, uh, will fire a blast off towards Archie. Uh, I think it's adorable that you would assume that I am a man just because I wield a gun. I mean, human. I don't care about the genders. I'm the Grinch. <laughs> Um, 17, I think, hits Archie's defense. 17 does hit Archie. Okay, so that beats it by three. Uh, so you will take 13 points of damage. Okay. Um, and you subtract your toughness from that first. Oh, okay. So toughness is six. So it's 13 minus six is nine. Seven. Mm hmm. 13 yes. minus 6 is 7. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> so I take 7 points of damage. You take 7 points of damage. That's well, better than <laughs> And how, how many, where do we find our total hit points? Uh, basically, everybody have, basically, everybody is fine up to 35. Okay. Uh, and then, basically, then you start having to basically deal with the fact that you are taking damage, you're taking penalties, and you have chances... And basically, any damage you take beyond 35 has chances of killing you at the end of the fight. 
uh, once you hit oh, it's, 50. Is that, the, is that the wound point thing at the bottom? You basically, there are wound points and then there are marks of death. And marks of death are what you start to take after you hit 35. And gotcha. then you have to roll against those marks of death to see if you die. But it happens at the end of the fight. So it's the traditional basically movie thing. Basically, bullets fly everywhere, and then you're like, "Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I've gotten I must have been must have been one of the straight bullets towards the end. Got me." Uh, and then you get to yeah. basically, uh, you have enough time Makes to sense. give it one final speech. You have a death monologue, and then you die. Nice. Yep. I love it. That's hilarious. All right, so we will go ahead and save this here, and then I will. Uh, basically, go ahead and go through my spiel. Um, as you may have noticed during basically during it, this is basically the reason why I am here. The reason why we're doing this, other than the fact that it's Christmas and it's fun to celebrate by attacking the attacking the North Pole and deposing uh, Santa Hitler, um, it's because of the fact that what it's the thing you can see directly below me um, is Lorelink, and it is what I use to help organize crazy situations like this. Um, as you might see right here currently, I'm looking at a, I have a chart for all the initiatives uh, already pre-set up, so I have all those in reference. Um, I also have all of the different totems and what they do as they get interactive within here, so I don't have to go pawing through a PDF to find them. Um, I can just look those things up quickly right here. Um, so that is what Lorelink is there for. Uh, Lorelink is a GM organization tool. Um, it is there to help organize, uh, basically keep all your thoughts organized, whether it's a more scattershot game, like Feng Shui is not a straightforward kind of plot point type thing. It's pretty much you come up with a couple of plot points and some enemies and you throw your players in that direction. And so you just have to have some notes to adjust to that. Um, or a more, you, but you could also handle a more organized campaign where you have castles and cities and dungeons and other things like that and NPC, reoccurring NPCs and things like that that you want to keep track of. Uh, so that is the whole point of this. Of these, of these streams is basically we have us we kind of do a kind of a loop. Um, either basically, some, I will plan out a session in Lorelink. I will stream that, and then we will uh, play through those sessions in various different game systems to show the fact that Lorelink is not just for D and D, even though that is probably the biggest one. Um, basically, we do that occasionally as well, but we like to show that we can handle all of the systems, and I like showing off all the cool different TTRPG systems out there. Um, so if you are interested in learning out more about that, uh, 20 has triggered the bot to put up the link. Um, you can also sign up for the alpha if you want to try the tool out for yourself, which is on the website. Um, and again, basically, since I, I think people have showed up before, basically, you're mostly already followers, but if you're listening and you have not followed, that's the easiest way to support us here and find out when we will next stream. Uh, as I mentioned, it won't be next week, but it will be the week after that. We will be back with part three of this. Uh, we stream every Tuesday about a route for about five o'clock, more or less around that time. Uh, so feel free to catch us there. Uh, you can sign up for our newsletter if you want to find out more about what the product is doing and what other exciting things we are doing in the future and any side streams or side projects, because occasionally we do things like uh, stream for Extra Life Charity and things like that as well. Um, if you want to catch... Uh, want to catch some past streams if you basically want to see for example part one of this adventure it is available on the youtube channel uh that we have uh and you can catch the streams there they will usually show up there within a week depending on how much on the ball i am uh because i want to make sure to get captions on them so that people on youtube get the same captioned experience and i try to put some work into making sure they're actually legible captions because we use weird words when we're playing role-playing games and i need to translate those uh, so all that to say, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed, and we will catch you all in a couple weeks. And uh, catch you all later. Yes, our mods, our mods are great. Basically, twenty is also basically for people. Basically, for people in the chat who don't know, uh, twenty is also a streamer as well. Um, and we're basically, probably streaming tonight. Yeah, I don't know what your plans are, so you could go ahead and. Plug your stuff. Yes. Woohoo. <laughs> Woo. 20, oh, yeah. you can plug. I said you can plug yourself 20 if you want. Oh, there you go. There it is. Shout oh, out. Thank right you. there. Got it. Chat. That's right.
the SO command. Have a good night, everyone. Sorry, Thank I you. didn't realize you were meaning like verbally. I, you know, <laughs> I'm in mod mode now. Yep, yep. You can say what you're doing tonight if you want. Um, and uh, then we will... I don't know what I'm playing tonight. Tune in to find out. Okay, Excellent. go there, find out, hang out, have fun. All right, I will let everyone go because I think people are running off to dinner. So we will catch you all later. Have a good night.